Okay, this week there's a article I saw uh, in the Orange County Register. It was posted on social media and it was discussed in a couple of places. Uh, and it says the 13th step, Alcoholics Anonymous wrestles with a culture of sexual predators. Um, <clears throat> I want to make a few comments on that, but I'd like to first start out by saying that Alcoholics Anonymous doesn't has never wrestled with a goddamn thing when it comes to the safety of its members. Uh, or when it's come to sexual predators, or when it's come to the many abuses that I witnessed in all my time in there, and the eyewitness accounts I hear from people all the time that have just gotten out of the cult or have been out of the cult for a long time. Uh, AA hid behind their little tradition where they talked about not having any opinions and outside issues. And uh, <clears throat> oftentimes the... Uh, the trusted servants or the venerable old timers or whatever you want to refer to them as it was doing some of the most uh, god awful things that I've ever seen uh, engaged in in there uh, the culture of AA or the fellowship of AA never had a, a word to say about it they never said uh, anything at all they swept it under the rug pretended it didn't exist and it, to this day if you bring up these kinds of things in a lot of AA circles the first thing they're going to tell you is that that lie about how <clears throat> these kinds of things don't happen in their meetings and the meetings they go to, they've never seen anything like this. I mean, it's, it's really kind of ironic that I'm doing a video on this, on this article after I don't, it wasn't the last video. It was the video before that, where I was talking about a serial killer that was using AA to pick victims up in couldn't have come at a better time that they want to put out this article that says they, uh, they struggle or they wrestle with a culture of sexual predators. Now they, have never had a problem with it. They've never said a word about it. They've denied it. They've covered it up. Uh, and I think the the real title of this article ought to be the culture of AA is being exposed for the phony fucking organization that it is that's protected uh, sexual predators for a very long time. I have a little bit of a strong feeling on that subject, of course. I mean, I think anybody who's been watching me for any lengthy period of time knows I have a pretty strong distaste for uh, Quackaholics Anonymous, but it, I, I, it's misleading to me uh, to say in this article title that it, they struggle with it. They don't, they've never struggled with anything. I mean, they've always had media and Hollywood and, and every kind of PR and treatment center and television commercial on their side. I mean, everywhere you look, it's in a dun, in, let me try to talk a little bit better, inundated in our society where, you know, if you have a drinking problem, you need to go to Quackaholics Anonymous. So I take a little exception uh, to the fact that they've ever struggled with anything. I mean, I know exactly what kind of people these, that we're dealing with here. So that's one of the first comments I wanted to make. I'm going to go through this article a little bit, and I'm going to make a few comments here and there. But I <laughs> can do that. So let me... Uh, let me start here. Of course, the, first, the, uh, the beginning part of it is a picture of Carla Breda's mother... Uh, who was killed by her fiancé. They were both in Alcoholics Anonymous. It's a good case in point for the very video I'm talking about. I mean, at the time that that happened, and the news media got a hold of it, and it was on 48 Hours, I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again, I did not see one single comment uh, from AA cult members saying, you know, this is a problem uh, in our fellowship, this is a problem in our in our. Uh, in the 12-step community, this is something that really needs to seriously be addressed. Uh, this is something we should do something about. I didn't see one single comment uh, that even hinted at anything like that. The only kind of comments I saw was people blaming Carla Breda for what happened or people saying AA is not responsible for this or people who were saying that, uh, you know, uh, AA certainly cannot be held accountable for what uh, foolish people do. And even saying that Carla Breda couldn't have possibly been innocent if she'd have gotten involved with anybody in AA, I mean, it was really disgusting and sickening. So once again, it's, it's a little bit further proof that uh, nobody in Alcoholics Anonymous has ever struggled with their fucking PR image. They're just afraid that they're being exposed now. You see, the, uh, the skeletons are coming out of the closet. You know, films like The 13th Step, you know, done by Monica Richardson and, uh, and articles like this is kind of shining a light on the part of AA that they, they never wanted you to find out about and know about. But the article opens up with this guy, his name is, shit, I can't pronounce that, Abram Tuvolv. Uh, he'd been a 
long-term member of Alcoholics Anonymous, and everybody assumed he was a good guy. I, I would have probably had a few suspicions myself in that situation, given how many old-timers I knew of that were under scum of the earth. But anyway, uh, there was a female AA member that was new in town that felt comfortable enough to go on an afternoon bicycle ride with him, even stopping at his house. And the outing ended with him, he's 72 years old, raping the woman so viciously that she played dead until it was over. Uh, he lived minutes away from this woman, is, was convicted, but is somehow out on a $150,000 bail while awaiting sentence, and certainly doesn't need to be out on any kind of bail while he's doing it. And then here's where uh, part of the, I understand what the journalist is doing here. The journalist is trying to strive for a, a type of integrity by not trying to take sides or anything and trying to actually report the news as it is, which is something that doesn't really exist in today's world. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, they begin with sexual predation among AA groups is so common that it's known in many circles as the 13th step of the famed 12 step program. No, it's not known in many circles. It's known in all circles. I haven't ever been to an AA meeting uh, where the 13th step uh, term didn't come up and nobody in any meeting said it in any hushed uh, forbidden whispers uh, to imply that it was a very bad thing and needed to be you know something done about nobody ever voiced it like that everybody was always smirking and grinning and you know they would even point to some of the old timer gurus and they would talk about how you know yeah he's he, he, he's a 13 stepper <laughs> but he's been sober for a very long time that kind of fucking bullshit uh, it says, victims, former officials, and some members say the culture of the organization, unregulated and loosely organized, unregulated is right, puts co vulnerable alcoholics at risk to predatory leaders whose only credential is their long-time sobriety. They got that right. And while many members are an alcoholics anonymous of their own volition, some criminal offenders are there as part of their court sentences and unless they volunteer it. Other members of the group don't know their criminal history. Well, not... That's a bunch of bullshit. I mean, obviously, this guy that they just opened up with in the article uh, was a longtime member of AA, the one who committed this violent rape. It's not just people who are court ordered into Quackaholics Anonymous that you got to be worried about. I mean, in my time uh, in the in the in the program, it wasn't just them. I mean, the the most twisted. Uh, the most twisted, abhorrent people that I met in my time in AA were the trusted servants and the old timers and the people running the things, you know, the people that were the treasurers and the chairpersons of the groups and the, uh, the ones who got called on to share every meeting and the ones who always got like a 10 minute soapbox, you know, time of their own uh, to run their fucking mouths in meetings that everybody trusted and, you know, put on a pedestal and said they could do no wrong. Those were the ones that were really engaged in some really ugly, abhorrent activity. But uh, this 48-year-old rape victim of this, of this guy that, in the uh, article opening said it's a very bad setup. It's a predator's party. Let me write about that. Uh, the guy was found guilty last year of rape, oral copulation by forced penetration with foreign objects and sexual battery. Neither he nor his lawyer could be reached for comment. Uh, a representative for Alcoholics Anonymous General Services of New York stressed that each local group in the fellowship operates independently. Well, that sounds really familiar. Every time there's something like this that comes out, the, the, the uh, AA cult cannot wait to rush out and issue some kind of PR statement saying that this stuff doesn't really happen, you know, in AA meetings. It's kind of like what I just got through talking about only a couple of videos ago with that serial killer. You know, no, we, we knew right away there was something wrong with him. We ran him off. I mean, here we go. It's not even been three weeks since that I did that video, and here we are with another situation just like it. Uh, top leaders in the United States and Canada have developed guidelines and reading material that acknowledge the dangers and advise members to be watchful. Uh, those guidelines and materials I covered in another video aren't worth anything. They're not worth the paper they're written on. Uh, you ask anybody who's a newcomer in an AA meeting what happens when you go into that group and you become a part of that home group, uh, how you're urged to throw away, what is it that's in their own phony fucking literature in the big book? You gotta throw away your logic and reasoning. You gotta uh, give everything over to your sponsors. You gotta trust God, trust the group, do all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's not like... I have never been to a meeting where anybody was warned about any potential dangers in Quackaholics Anonymous. Every meeting I went to, uh, any newcomer coming into the program is told that, you know, there is a solution, we're the solution, and you got to trust us, everything about you, you got to turn it over to us. 
It says the fellowship even created a safety card that reads, we request that members and others refrain from any behavior which might compromise another person's safety. Like, that's really worth the fucking paper it's written on. And, and you know, the thing about it is, uh, they've already said there are people who are court-ordered in there and they can't, you know, they don't know what those people are in there for or why they're court-ordered in there. So that's what the old-timers, that's what the old-timer predators uh, are going to use, you know, to get around it. They'll use that very safety card for that purpose. They'll say, well, they're not talking about people like me. They're talking about the newcomers. They're talking about uh, the people in the treatment centers and the people in drug court. That's who they're talking about. They're not talking about me. I've been here for 25 years, and I had not had a drink in, you know, 25 years, and, uh, you know, I, I live a spiritual life and all that other garbage I used to hear in there all the time. So that safety card is not worth the paper it's written on. I mean, if they actually hand out a safety card like that, you might as well throw it in the garbage and not even read it because it won't do any good in a program that has a cult of personalities where you're supposed to place all your trust into and you're not even supposed to use logic and reasoning and you're supposed to have faith and come to believe in those people to take care of you and your life. And then it even says here in the very next sentence, it's up to each group to decide what to do with the card. Yeah. I'm sure the old-timer predators that are running these groups are going to be going out of their way to make sure everybody understands that they, that, they, that they need to be cautious when they enter into these rooms. I'm sure those people are really going to give up their positions of power uh, in their little hierarchy, you know, to read a card that they'll say doesn't apply to them. It says, GSO often shares the experience that's been shared with us to help AA group study and decide how they will apply AA principles to their daily lives. Well, that's another lie. Uh, to reach an informed group conscience, as every AA group gets to do, I have never seen an informed group conscience. The only thing I've ever seen when I was in AA is a bunch of people arguing about uh, where the money was going to go and who was going to make the fucking coffee. I mean, I never saw any group conscience that was of anything of value or anything to do with the safety of members. I mean, they talk about new people in such a demeaning manner. Uh, they talk about two newcomers as though, you know, you newcomers, you know nothing. You know, you don't know how to stay sober. You got to trust us. We know how to do that. I've never seen anybody in an AA meeting. I've never seen an AA meeting that actually said, uh, you know, let's call on people with... Uh, you know, that are that are new in the program only. I've never seen that. All I've ever seen is a worship of the same personalities that are running these things, that are the same predatory assholes that do the kind of thing as this rape that got, that's talked about at the very beginning of this article. You know, just disgusting, all of it is. And so let's go on with this article. Former directors and victims advocates insist that Alcoholics Anonymous General Service Board can do more to protect its local members. Yeah, they could do a whole lot more. Uh, each group is autonomous. That's an excuse not to use the power the board has to stop abusive behaviors, said James Branscombe, a former board director. There are groups in AA where you could call it a meat market. You have older guys hitting on newcomer women. Some groups are hijacked by gurus. No, correction, all groups. And AA will claim they have no power to do anything about it. That's because they're the ones participating in it. Oh, and it gets even better. And the attacks keep stacking up. In Santa Clarita, a member killed his... Oh, I lost my place there for a second. Let me click back here. My computer screen went off. Uh, in Santa Clarita, an AA member killed his 31-year-old fiance, whom he met through the group in 2011. Eric Allen Earl is now serving 26 years to life at R.J. Donovan Correctional Facility in San Diego. In Ventura County, two women were sexually assaulted by an AA leader who gained their trust and then gave them booze. He's behind bars serving a 10-year sentence. In Covina, an AA member and owner of a sober living home, I've already talked about those, you know what those are all about, had to shut down his facility after his history of arrest for indecent exposure, sexual battery, and unlawful touching came to light in 2012. <coughs> He's even listed in Megan's Law as an offender in violation of parole. It's not that these attacks keep stacking up. It's not like this is something new. It's not like something... Uh, that, that just now has started happening. It's something that's been going on for decades and decades and nobody's ever done anything about it. I mean, these are, that you know, they're just naming just a few uh, examples. I mean, if you started looking state by state, city by city, town by town, uh, where all these people are, there's, I mean, this is probably child's play in comparison to some of the shit I've seen. Feeding grounds for predators. 
And it mentions Monica Richardson, who spent 36 years in Alcoholics Anonymous, produced the 2015 documentary The 13th Step, tracking such sexual assaults across the world. How has this been tolerated, she said. These AA meetings have become the feeding ground for predators. It's all over the world. Richardson and others are pushing for Alcoholics Anonymous to adopt a zero-tolerance policy against sexual harassment and force leaders to undergo anti-harassment training. They also want the fellowship to create separate meetings for people under 21 years old and discourage courts and related services from dispatching criminal offenders. That's kind of a step, of course, in the right direction in terms of actually trying to do something about the current situation, from my personal opinion now. You know, I, I know that I'm not going to ultimately get my way about what I would like done with AA. I would like to see it, you know, done away with altogether. But in terms of actually pulling out court-ordered people, in terms of actually fixing it where criminal courts can't send people to AA, uh, or treatment centers that, that are nothing but 12-step profit mills that send people to AA, if you could actually get those two things uh, out of Alcoholics Anonymous, then I would say the fellowship would pretty much die on its own. I know that when I was going, 99% uh, of the people in there were there by the court system itself. As far as uh, anti-harassment training or against sexual harassment, I'm not sure what it would do with the predators running this thing, but I think if you push this idea that they're pushing forward in this article more into the public conscience, I think it would give people second thoughts uh, before they actually go to these meetings and before they actually, you know, look into this. I think the fact that if you just push a public awareness, like what's being done with articles like this, out into the world where people in general uh, don't accept the, uh, the lifetime movie uh, picture of what AA really is and show it for what it, you know, that it's rotten at the core, I think that it would be a step in the right direction of ending its grip on society at large. It's never probably ever going to go away, but I think it, it can become weakened. I think it can become weakened to the point it will be unimportant. Uh, the Center for Disease Control uh, says 4.5% of U.S. men are alcoholics with women at 2.5%. Well, there is no such thing as an alcoholic, actually. Uh, Richardson states most alcoholics are downtrodden and accustomed to being scolded by family members, bosses, and parents already yearning for acceptance. They get love bombed at the meeting. She's right about that. That's how they rook you in. That's how they, they trap you into their cult. They make you believe that you're the, uh, they're the only people that can understand you. Uh, she goes on to state people come very, very lonely. Then they get hugged and love bombed and told, I love you, I love you. A lot of them don't have the assertiveness to say no after that. It is true because, you know, when, you do, when I got to AA, you know, and like a lot of other people, you're not really accepted by the world at large. You're not accepted by society at large. And so there is an intense pressure on you, you know, to, to try to mold and to try to fit in and to try to do these kinds of things, you know. And, uh, and it's kind of implied, uh, and it kind of hangs in the air, that if you don't do those things, all the support will be taken away from you, and you'll be right back out where you started. Uh, for myself, I didn't have to worry too much about the fitting in deal, because, you know, I, you know, I started relapsing uh, <laughs> after I'd been in for a, a certain period of time. So, you know, once you're a relapser, you're not ever going to get the... Uh, the uh, the love bombing or the acceptance ever again, but she's she's a hundred percent right about that That's one of the ways they snare people into their traps uh, So I'll go on with this article in an internal letter to the AA General Service Board in 2008 former board member Paul Cleary offered his concern that minors in Alcoholics Anonymous are especially endangered. Well, I would have to go along with that I don't think anybody who's a minor should be in AA anyway or any other kind of drug treatment program uh, unless it's some kind of really serious problem. I mean, but if you're, you know, you're a, a minor who's got caught smoking a joint, you know, or, or drinking a beer or something like that, you certainly don't need to be locked up in treatment, damaged by AA and ruined for the rest of your life. Uh, and then I'm going to skip this paragraph, but it does go into child sexual abuse, which, by the way, I've, I know of some cases of things even worse than that. I know of a, of, of a certain, I know of some people who met their... Uh, I know of some people who were 16 and, and 17 years old when they first started going out with their, you know, 50 and 60 year old old timers, and I know some really ugly stories about that. I could get into it, but I, I'm not. I'm not going to have time for this one. I'm mainly just trying to go through this article. I'm not going to read that whole letter either. Uh, 
But then we get on down here to Eric Allen Earl, who had been attending the program for 20 years. See, here again, every one of these cases that they've mentioned to these people that have done the things they've done, they, they're old timers. They're not people who are court ordered in. Uh, he had been both voluntary and involuntary court ordered in, but he was at an AA meeting in Santa Clarita that he met his future fiance, Carla Breda. Uh, and we know the situation of the details there. The grieving mother tried unsuccessfully to sue Quackaholics Anonymous for wrongful death. And still, Mendez keeps trying to get out the message. It's very dangerous in AA. I think that's the thing that we need to push uh, on the public more than anything. Not so much an idea of reforming a thing or trying to do anything. I think the AA cult is just completely, utterly rotten. I don't think there's any way to salvage it. And I don't believe in reforming it. And the people who talk about the... The AA agnostics and the AA freethinkers that think you can actually do something valuable with it, I mean, I think they're kind of deluded, in my opinion. I mean, there's nothing to be done. There's nothing worthwhile. There's nothing good. There's nothing uh, at all about AA that require, that needs or deserves any re redemption whatsoever. I mean, it's a sick freaking cult that tells you you can't have any willpower, you can't have any independence, you can't rely on your own thinking, and you can't ever hope to have any happiness in life because you can't accomplish it on your own. Only they can do it for you. I mean, it's it's an insipid poison. You know, I didn't realize until I had been out of AA for a very long time just how much of that was eating up uh, into my personal life. I couldn't tell you just how much of my worldview was, was really all fucked up as a result of it. So, yeah, it's very dangerous in AA. And uh, let's see, I'm going to skip a little bit more here. It just goes into more detail about uh, more situations. And here at the end, we get to the very rub of the whole situation. And this is what I'm talking about. And this is what I would kind of want to wrap up with. And this was uh, the main thing when it talks about how Alcoholics Anonymous struggles uh, with sex abuse. There was an extra requirement for the woman raped by whoever this Tuvav character is or whatever the fuck his name is, the 70-year-old guy at the beginning of the article. Don't go to the police. Moments after the woman was raped, she said she went to her sponsor of three years who advised her against reporting the attack to authorities and going to the hospital. She said, you were not violently raped. You're not broken. If you talk about this, you're going to get a reputation in AA and everybody will hate you. Now, let me repeat that to anybody who's being a little slow here about it. This is a woman who's just been violently raped to the point that she had to pretend she was dead to get away from this fucker. And her sponsor, her sponsor tells her, you're not violently raped, you're not broken. Broken. If you talk about this, you're going to get a reputation and everybody will hate you. The woman said her sponsor also advised her to work on her inner self and pray because she was a sinner. That's right. Uh, this woman's raped to the point that she has to play dead to survive it, but she needs to work on her inner self and pray because she's a sinner. I knew in my heart what she was telling me was crazy. I knew it wasn't the best advice. She decided to call a rape hotline, which advised her to put her clothes in a sealed bag, preserve the DNA that he had left behind. She didn't report the rape to the police until nearly a month later, and the case file lingered for more months before the DNA was processed. While the investigation was slow going, the repercussions were immediate. Female members cornered her in bathrooms or hallways and told her to stop talking about the attack at meetings because she was scaring off newcomers. They said I was ruining people's chances to get sober and rape was an outside issue. So, Alcoholics Anonymous has the nerve to say that they grapple or wrestle with a cult culture of sex abuse. When you've got this story right here and many others like it that I've heard firsthand where you dare to speak out about the abuses of the crooked behavior of an old timer and what does the cult do? The cult takes up for the old timer and goes on the attack offensive towards the victim. They said I was ruining people's chances to get sober. Rape was an outside issue. I think if there's anything that you can take away from this video, even if you don't want to hear anything else that was said in all my angry rambling out here, remember those last words. You're getting raped by an AA old timer. And they said I was ruining people's chances to get sober because rape is an outside issue. That one sentence, I think, should sum the whole fucking thing up. I mean, the idea that these bastards actually say that they wrestle with a culture of sexual abuse is, you know, it would be funny if it wasn't just so, so, so disgusting to me.
But yeah, I'm going to post and copy a link to this article in the video. Spread this article. Uh, if you're out there, spread it to everybody you know. Show it to everybody who you think uh, may go to AA or is in AA. And, uh, you know, spread it far and wide. Get the word out on these bastards and destroy them. <laughs> Anyway, I think I've ranted enough on this one, so uh, I guess I'll see you guys next week, hopefully, and not two weeks.